Alright, so today we'll be looking at moment generating functions. So they seem to be pretty scary at first, but don't worry, they're fairly easy. And this is just basically an introduction and the kind of questions you'll be presented because they won't necessarily just ask you to, oh, solve the moment generating function of the gamma distribution. I mean, that's kind of a given and you should know them by heart, but they'll show you questions like this at an intermediate level. Okay? Alright, so first one that's given here. It says, suppose that y has a gamma distribution with alpha equals n over 2 for some positive integer n and beta equal to some specific value. Use the moment joining function, I'm just going to call it MGF, method to show that w equals 2y has a chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom. Okay, so this is basically a very typical question for you to show um, a certain distribution if you have a fixed value for something uh, for one of the parameters that it'll give you another distribution. There's uh, there's quite a few of them, but this is one of them. Um, I'll show you guys and I'll take the question out of the way just to have a bit more room. Okay, all right. So moment generating functions, you're just calculating the expected value. So expected value, um, how do we calculate that? It's usually just whatever is in the bracket. So in this case, it's gonna be m w is a function of t equals the expected value of e t to the power of w. Okay, all right, so here, that's your moment generating function. This is the way you do moment generating functions. And as I was saying, when you're calculating the expected value, you multiply with everything you see in the bracket. So you're going to have the probability density function, which in this video I'm going to refer to as a PDF. To multiply by this, which is what's in our bracket. So the MGF will always look like this, except the W will change, just exactly like here. Okay? Alright, so we also need to know what's the PDF of the gamma distribution. So this is usually given to you in the back of your book as a table, and you should know them by heart. So it's f of y equals So the small f means that it's a probability density function. So the important word there, it's density, probability density function. So make sure you watch for that in the question, okay? So again, I'm going to refer that to as a PDF. All right, so to calculate this, we're going to do um, this multiplied by this in an integral from 0 to infinity. You should know what the function is going to be defined in with intervals. So for the gamma distribution, it's defined between 0 to infinity. And we also should refer back to the question that here our w equals 2y over beta. So this is what we'll be solving for. So I'm just going to bring this down. Okay. So 0 to infinity of e t 2y over b, which was our w, and then multiplied by the PDF. Okay? So I kind of like to, sorry, I'm just not going to do it that, that way. All right, so I like to um, kind of split the PDF. So I like to write it like this. Okay, so this way we can see the uh, the function and the constants, what we were gonna consider as a constant in this integral um, better. So this is gonna be treated as a constant because there's no y, right? So we're solving for dy, we're solving for the variable y. There's no y here, so it's basically basic integration. And if you are going to use any of the traditional methods to solve this, you will be here all day, okay? So this is why the gamma distribution is so amazing, and if you know how to use it, it's it's one of the fastest ways to solve an integral. And it does have to look a certain way, so it does have to be from 0 to infinity. You do have to have an e to the power of um, whatever you're solving for has to be negative, so there has to be negative y which we're going to have it here. And you do also need y to the power of anything. So this could be the and cost. It could have been 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever. Okay. So what this is going to become, so we're going to take this out of the integral. Okay, so, so we know that we can add whatever is in the power here. So we're going to add it, and also I'm going to leave out out of the bracket the minus y, b, 
because you're going to see that's going to be the, the trick to solve the, the question. So it's going to look a little something like this. So what I'm in is I'm going to take it out like that. Then what I'm going to get is, okay, 1 minus 2t uh, over beta y alpha minus 1 dy. Okay. So the way it goes for the trick is you are going to take whatever is here, okay? And usually um, the integral doesn't look as pretty as this. Usually this could be a constant and this will look different. And already, if you know your moment generating functions by heart, you will see that you're on the right track and you'll find it a bit later. So here we have y to the power of alpha minus 1. So I'm going to give you the example of if this was a constant. Okay, so if we had, for example, which does not apply to this question, let's say we had y to the power of 5, what we would have to do is to see, we were going to have to do um, alpha minus 1 equals 5, so our alpha equals 6, okay? So then we would have 6 as our alpha, okay? But in this situation, if I do alpha minus 1, equals alpha minus 1, I'll just get alpha, which brings us to our trick. So the trick to solving this integral, you don't go any further than this. So you take the gamma of whatever is in the power, okay? So right now the power here, if I do alpha minus 1 equals alpha minus 1, we'll get alpha. So the gamma of alpha, okay, over and this whole bracket, okay? So 1 minus 2t divided by beta to the power of whatever you got. So here we have alpha under our gamma, like that. Okay, so um, an important note is if you're solving this and you have a constant, so you have 6 as your alpha, so here you would have gamma of 6. Um, a very just easy side note to how to calculate a gamma of anything is n minus 1 factorial. So your top here would be a 5 factorial if you had this situation, which we don't, which we don't. This is not part of the question, okay? Just forget about this. I just was showing you the point of it. So this is the most important part to remember. So once your integral looks like this, this is how you solve it, okay? So we, ha we can't forget to multiply by that, by the way. So times 1 over... Okay, all right, so I usually do like to uh, expand this and write it out just so I don't make any mistakes and everything goes as smooth as possible. So this is going to become 1 over gamma of alpha beta gamma times over basically 1 times beta alpha 1 minus 2t alpha. So I just wrote it out, just expanded it. And then we're going to see that this cancels out with this. And then this cancels out with this. So then all we are left is 1 over this. So basically that gives us 1 minus 2t minus to the power of minus alpha. And what do we define our alpha in the question? If I just bring this little guy back. So we said with alpha equals n over 2. And then if we do 1 minus 2t to the power of minus n over 2, we can clearly see that this is the moment generating function of a chi-squared distribution with n degrees of freedom. And what I would really suggest is to know your all of your moment generating functions by heart. And um, so in that case, when you're solving questions like this, when you're in the middle of the integral, you'll know that you're on the right track and at the end of the question, you can kind of verify that you have the right moment generating function according to everything you know by heart. So yeah, all right. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave it below. And if you have any other questions about moment generating functions, if you want a more basic breakdown of it, although at the beginning we did explain it quite a bit, there's not much more to it. It's just, you really need to do lots of practice and watch out for the wording of the question. Happy studying. Bye-bye.